Hey everyone, it's Rachel from Sugar Maple Farmhouse and today I'm gonna to show you how we prepped our garden beds and give you a garden tour. In late April or early May, we start prepping our garden beds by laying down boxes. So we have done this every year since we've lived at the farmhouse. In fact, I think we did it the last two years that we lived in the suburbs, but there we only had two garden beds. I love this method because it helps to keep the weeds at bay when the plants are young and it helps to build the soil year after year. I used to use old Amazon boxes to do this, but now I actually will buy 100% recycled cardboard because I don't like having the tape on the Amazon packages or any of that glue going into the garden beds. And to buy boxes for our beds, it is about $60. Step two is adding on some soil to help build the soil year after year. So this mix that we are adding here is a bit of compost and some top soil that gets added to the beds. Sometimes I'll just do compost, but I'd like to switch off year after year so there's not too much compost just going into the beds. My next step is planting. So on years that it's really dry, the boxes will not have a chance to dissipate or even soften before I end up planting. So what I do is I use that tool that you saw just there to cut through the boxes and then I tuck the plants in and I cover them. This helps to keep the roots of the plants cool and moist. The last step is to add on mulch, and I generally will use playground mulch. I prefer mulch over leaves, I prefer mulch over straw. I've tried the straw before and we had a lot of grass in the beds. I don't have enough leaves to use leaves, so we go with mulch. The reason I like playground mulch is because number one, it's not dyed, there's nothing added to it, and it's also double filtered and soil are the most expensive part of this process and to fill our beds now it probably cost about $250 total with the new soil that we add and the mulch. It was more expensive in the beginning but now that our beds have a great base on them we don't have to add as much every single year. All right, so now that you've seen how we prep our beds, I'm gonna show you our garden space. But before I get started, if you could subscribe to our channel, that would be wonderful. That way you can keep up with everything we're doing here at the farmhouse. So the last time I did a garden tour was 2020, when this space was brand new. So some things have changed since then, some things have stayed the same. I'll show you what we love, what we don't love, and everything we've changed too. Let's get started. All right, so as we kick things off here, I want to tell you a little bit about what's changed, what's stayed the same. I also wanna tell you that not everything in here is going to be perfect. We certainly will not do everything the way you might do it, but I mean, that's the beauty of gardening, that you can do things in different ways and you can have it work. So this is the garden, this is kind of an overview. Those of you who have watched that video from 2020 might already be noticing some things that are different. The biggest change is that we took out eight of our beds that were here this year. So we did that because we didn't use four of them last year. They were beds that were really low to the ground and I just didn't feel like we were really getting kind of enough out of them we were growing watermelons and things that liked to be low to the ground in them, which was great, but those were sprawling all over the place. So we just took them out. We, we had covered them last year. And this year I was like, you know, I just don't feel like we need them. We grew enough last year for our farm stand and for us. And so I wanted a little bit of a smaller garden. Instead, we replaced them with these crab apple trees. So I will also tell you guys, that we have had a drought this year. In May, we received less than one third an inch of rain. 
in June, I think we had less than half an inch. Grand Rapids has gotten more rain than we do, but we are on the outskirts of town. It always somehow seems to miss us or hop over us <laughs> or start after us. So everything is really doing honestly poorly this year just because of our rain situation. The vegetables in the garden are doing okay because we have a watering system in there that I did not have in 2020. The reason I, we put that in was because in 2020, my dogs are back here too, <laughs> sorry guys. In 2020, we also had a really dry year and I spent two hours a night out here watering our garden and I did not want to do that again. So we put in a drip line. I'll show you that because in some places it's saying really poorly and you'll be able to see it sticking up. But first, these crab apple trees. So why did I put in crab apple trees? Well, we already have apple trees that we had planted in 2020. Um, you can see that, so all of these were planted at the same time, there's five of them. You can see this little sad Macintosh isn't doing well and it has never done well. Everything else is doing pretty wonderfully, dry, but pretty wonderfully. Uh, that Macintosh pollinates this apple tree. This apple tree <laughs> pollinates those two down there. So I put the crab apples in as another pollinator option for this apple tree. If we lose that Macintosh, which it's looking like we might at this point, it's just so shabby. I wanted to be able to have pollinators for the apple trees here that needed it. And these crab apple trees can make that happen. The other thing is that these trees flower beautifully in the spring, just like um, just like the apple trees and they get the fruit on them, which actually stays through December. So I thought some of their branches could be beautiful, not only in early spring, but also as we get into our colder months here. So you can see, again, they're not gonna look great, you guys. It's been super dry, but you can see they already have some little fruits on them. And we probably will put something around their bases because you can also see when we picked up the stone and everything that was here, the weeds just took over. Because it's been so dry, most of the grass has been dying. The one thing that's alive are the weeds. Uh, you can even see in our backyard here, I'll show you really fast. Like you can see how brown it is back here. Hi, baby. Compared to I mean, just everything is so, so brown. Not even compared to anything. Everything is really brown. So that is our first change. Our second change, and this is an area we're still working on, is we had put in these little cherry bushes. There's one there, and there's one there. This is the first year we actually got a really good, true harvest on them. Uh, we also, in 2020, had some blueberry bushes and stuff here. Nothing has ever grown well here. And it's been really hard for us to maintain this border. The blueberry bushes died, the raspberry bushes died. So we took that all out, I think maybe last year, even two years ago. And we've been working on, there's been landscape fabric below there, which is why it looks so awful. But we've been working on kind of just putting that area back to grass. We did, however, plant some raspberry bushes here this year on the edge of the garden and they're doing really, really well already. So raspberries tend to grow well in our region. And if at any point you guys can't hear me because it gets too windy, I will try to put some captions on the screen. We do, we are supposed to get a storm rolling through, but I'm not hopeful. I'm not hopeful of it actually hitting us. So I think these are gonna do wonderfully. They're already doing really well. They were little sticks when I bought them, so I'm excited about those. All right, so let's dive into the rest of this. So in our front beds, we have some, um, we have our Roma tomatoes. So I have six of these this year for sauce and to sell in our farm stand. And then I have zucchinis. I have one there. I have one there that is not doing well. I actually don't know what's wrong with it. It's not, it's like it's not getting enough water. But again, we have, we do have lines that go all the way through the beds. 
Uh, you can see the corn also this year is a little short and it's probably not gonna do any better at this point. Uh, but it's again, because of our lack of rain. We have, like I said, we have that water line. It is in all these beds, but it's just not doing enough to give some beds like this corn bed, the water that it truly, truly needs. On these inner beds, I have more tomatoes. This is the first year we're going to climb the indeterminate tomatoes up these arches. So we put these up this spring. And I have three on each side of the arches. This one might actually have four because it's a larger arch. In the bed with the tomatoes, I have basil and I have some eggplants. You may also notice that all of our beds have marigolds around them. I've done this every year since I've had a garden and I had a couple gardens before we moved here in the suburbs. This plant is not getting enough water. You can tell by the way its leaves are curling. I had, anyways, I had, I use marigolds always. They're supposed to keep rabbits and other things away. I've not had a rabbit problem, so maybe they work. <laughs> I've not had a rabbit problem in either home, but here we have cats, we have barn cats, so they help to keep the rabbits away too. Um, I don't notice that they keep any other pests away, but I do think that they look pretty. I, I do always buy the marigolds, so you will see, uh, you will probably see a couple tags laying around here randomly that I haven't seen to pick up yet. But uh, next year I'm hoping to grow my own. That's Daisy back there. Uh, you can see some dill that's just popping up here. These pole beans are going insane. So I planted these from seeds directly in the ground and this is what we got. <laughs> it's, they're just going crazy. And this week our cucumbers have also taken off that are here on the other side of this trellis. I will tell you, I have some bush beans next to the poles. Um, Again, I planted these, these guys aren't doing that great. I planted that from seed because the ones that I planted in the greenhouse didn't do well. My beans never transplant well. So I, I think in the future, I'm just going to plant them as seed out here. And then this box is just packed. You can see I have more basil. I have tomatillos in here with the tomatoes. Um, some people say tomatillos. Uh, I probably am not pronouncing it right, but that's what's in here. Again, more cucumbers. I think these are the pickle cucumbers, the pickle version. Oh, hello cucumber. We have a little cucumber right here already. Something looks like it's been eating it. Like him. I will pick that later. This is kind of the front of the section then. Again, this bed is the same. So um, the tomatillos, tomatoes, cucumbers, and then beans again. So I, these are the beans that were in the greenhouse. And you can see how they just really struggle. I planted these the same time I planted these ones that are crawling up this trellis already so it's really better for me personally to plant them in the ground I also in this bed and then I think the other bed too I have some kind of squash I'm not sure if this is loofah or if it is um, spoon gourds but those are the two things I have planted in the garden this year. We planted our pumpkins somewhere else this year because we wanted a whole field of them. And I'll probably show you that. It's not doing well. Again, we have had no rain and I was counting on not having to water that space, but we've had to water it a little because you'll see it's just horrid looking. Anyways, that is our shorter, smaller front section. And I'm really happy with it. Even though some things aren't working out, other things are doing beautifully.
So the back section, I have our peas that I planted in March. They need to come down. You can see they're getting ready to go. The kids we have so many still. This is the best pea crop I have had ever since we moved here. So the kids came out here the other day. We picked a ton of them and we still have a ton left. So my only kind of sadness with this section is that I didn't get kind of get my butt out here to put some of these in the farm stand because we definitely have enough for that. So I think next year when I do this, I'll have to remember that yes, that's a great thing to do. <laughs> uh, next to them, I have Brussels sprouts. I have not planted Brussels sprouts before. This is my first time ever planting them. I don't know truly what the process is going to be here. I put these in in May. I knew it was really late for them. I know they like cold weather better. But they're growing so I'm not really I'm not really sure if they're just gonna bolt on me or what but I guess we'll just have to wait and see because I know that they probably should have been up a month ago there's also chamomile that I put in this bed I like letting chamomile go wild because it just it makes me happy so wrapping around coming through the trellis uh, there are more gourds on these trellises too. So I will show you where I can. I don't know if I can see any. Oh yeah, you can see some here. So when these peas come down, which will probably be this week, next week, these guys will take off. And I put them in here. At the same time, I put in my other, my other plants and they're doing fine. These are loofah though, that I know for sure. And I've planted loofah on, in here before. I've planted it on this arch before. So I'm excited to have it here again. I have not been successful yet in drying loofah. <laughs> uh, I've had it dry better outside than I've been able to get it to dry in the house. But um, I'm gonna try to leave it this year after the first frost. I might actually leave it on the trellis all winter and then come and see it in the spring and see how it's looking. Um, okay, in this section we have more tomatoes, they're heirloom tomatoes. This is for this tomatillo bed. This is also the first year I'm using these to you guys and I will leave you a link to them in the description below. So far I do like them a lot better, a lot better than the silver ones that I still have floating around here randomly. So. Again, more tomatoes, the peas, more squash down there, which I think is another kind of loofah. And then I'll explain about the stone when I get over there. Again, more peas, more loofah, more marigolds, more tomatoes. The beds kind of mirror each other in the garden here. <clears throat> then um, we get some more zucchini, which man, something is eating the leaves of this guy like crazy. I have actually never seen that before. Whatever it is, it's hitting my zucchini really hard. I'm guessing it's these guys. Yep, looks like you. All right, I'll have to take care of them when I'm done here. Uh, these are the pepper beds. So peppers traditionally do not grow well for me. Um, that's why there's so many in here. There are, I don't know, there's almost, I think, 10 peppers in here. There were at some point. Uh, you can see there's one that's not doing well. These are doing okay. This one's doing great, but I did buy this one from the store. The rest of these have grown from seed in the greenhouse. Uh, this one came from the store because I did not do any banana pepper this year, and that's what that is. Again, peppers because I have a hard time growing them. There was one there, it's gone. Looks like I'm losing this one. Oh, but you can see here our line. So this one I had actually lost in a little frost and I thought it was gonna come back and do great and it, it didn't. Um, anyway, so here's our line, you can see it. This is a good example. You can actually see it back on this other pepper bed too. We had this put in professionally 
and I do not think that they did a good job. <laughs> I will just say that. Uh, they're a landscape company and they're used to putting landscaping drip lines in and I think what I wanted was just a little too different. The line in a lot of places goes way too close to the edge, which is why they sometimes have issues with grass growing right along the edge or other things because my edges are getting watered really nicely. Again, you can see it here right on the edge. So Kevin and I at some point might try to change this. This one's getting it too. You can see this zucchini is doing better, although it's definitely taking on some damage still. Okay, the back beds are all bolting. They're all cooler weather crops, or at least the lettuce is bolting. Everything else is doing okay. So I didn't plant the front of this bed because it had ants in it this year, so I just let it rest. I am gonna come and sprinkle cinnamon in it and see how that goes. But I do have kale and I have some chard in here. The cabbages are growing really nicely. The other thing about these beds back here, you guys, is we usually don't have a chance in these beds to do our box system, which is why they have so much more grass in them than our other beds. Uh, the reason is, is because we usually put the boxes in here in May or April, and these beds are already planted by then because there are colder weather crops. So we've got some cauliflower here. Nothing's coming up yet. It looks, doesn't look like it anyways. Uh, but like I said, the cabbages are doing amazing. Chard is doing really well. Uh, I have chives randomly growing in places and I didn't want to get rid of them. <laughs> so there's random chives. This is a project I started working on that I had to put on hold just while we, while we did other things. I do at some point want to put stones throughout here. I was going to try to finish this backside this first year, uh, this year, and then try to do the front later. So I will still try to get this done at some point this summer, but it's not going to be probably this month. I thought it would be. I hoped it would be before I did this garden tour, but life happens. <laughs> uh, this is broccoli that I know because, hello little friend, how are you? You can see some of it's popping up already. And then, like I said, our lettuce has started bolting uh, some, most of it. So we've been either pulling it, giving it to the chickens, we give it to the donkeys as treats. They all love it. So that's what we're doing with our lettuce that's bolting. This lettuce is all still good. So I'll probably go pull that tomorrow and then clear out these beds. This bed, aside from some of the weeds, I also have onions in it. So I have to be careful when pulling because they're not totally ready to come out yet here. They need more time. So that is the main garden. That's the garden that was here the last time I showed you guys this space. Those are some of our updates, some of our changes. And now I'm gonna show you um, this other space that we put in this year. So this is our grapevine space. We put these in this year. Uh, we are hoping to have grapes in about two years. I will do a full blog post or a full video and a full blog post on the grapevines and what we did here exactly because I did, oh gosh, I'm not pulling that out right now. I did record this process. Um, so the goal with the grapevines is to get your vine by the end of the year to this top 
thread or top wire. Like I said, the rain situation this year has made things so, so difficult. We did a lot of landscaping. Uh, you can probably see some of it around the greenhouse. And we put this in and it's just the water situation has made it so, so difficult. The other thing is I am probably gonna come and lay landscape fabric right along the line for the grapevines because it is getting really hard to keep up with the weeds. And Kevin can mow through here, which is what I'm just gonna have him do. But along the line, I think I'm just gonna put the landscape fabric to protect the vines themselves. We have lost some of them. Uh, so the middle one there was a brand new one. It wasn't in the greenhouse. The middle one here was also not in the greenhouse. And then this one was in the greenhouse and it got a leaf the day before we put it out here. And then it just couldn't deal with the lack of rain. All the other vines though are doing decently. So like I said, my goal is to get these things to the top before the end of the season. We have a long way to go. I was hoping that we would be doing better by now, but I really think this rain has just made life hard on us. However, when these are in, they're going to look beautiful and we're going to have a lot of grapes. This little sad spot here is for blueberry bushes. Our soil is not very acidic and blueberries need acid. They like acidic soil, so they are not doing anywhere near as good as the raspberries because I'm still working on changing the composition of our soil. We'll see if they make it again. Um, the greenhouse, I know some of you are wanting a tour of the inside. I'm not going to fully go in and do that today. It does finally look kind of like I want it to, but I have to clean it up from the season still. And uh, I will just show you that maybe in August. It's really hot in there right now. <laughs> it's going to be hot in August too, I guess. But uh, the greenhouse, we landscaped around here. So we did this all ourselves. This is another cherry tree that we put in. At the same time we put the other ones in, but our fence line used to run along here. And when they put the water line in for the donkeys they, and the electric, they put it straight through. So, uh, and then they put the fence on that little cherry tree. So it's recovering and I think we'll get cherries from it in maybe two years. The pathway back here and the porch we had somebody do last year. Again, I'll show you guys a different, a different video of all this and explain exactly what we did. I was really hoping that we would get a good amount of rain this year and all this would take off and it would look lush and beautiful and I could show you everything, but that is not what it happened. We had a drought. Case in point, I had planned this beautiful wildflower field for back here behind this space and nothing grew because we just didn't get any rain. I planted it a day before we were supposed to get rain and the rain never came. So we have weeds instead of wildflowers. Uh, these daisies back here were probably here anyways, but yeah, I had bought seed and I planted this whole space with wildflowers and just nothing. All we have are the weeds to show for it. Um, this space is technically our pumpkin field. Uh oh, little boy donks are playing. Oh, okay, they're fighting. <laughs> um, okay, this space is technically our pumpkin field. We had massive problems. Well, not massive problems, but this space does not look like I want it to. So before you tell me that it looks awful, I know that it looks awful. Uh, it does not look like I wanted it to. So we tilled it. We did all that good stuff. We supplemented this space with our donkey poop, which is what we've done with our flower beds too in our front flower areas, which I will show you again on another video. Um, and the no rain is just killing us. So 
I only planted probably about a third of this field. I got this tool that was supposed to be really awesome for planting seeds. It did not work. So I ended up planting them by dragging my foot through and popping seeds in. Um, so the pumpkins are all pretty willy nilly. I don't know how this is gonna go this year. I did plant enough that we should get some. You can tell they're really being hit by the lack of rain. And I wasn't planning to water this field at all. Last year we got enough rain. This year we have not gotten enough rain. So we did have to bring out the sprinkler even kind of to get this. Those little boys over there are playing so hard. Cosmo, Leo. They're just gonna ignore their mama. Okay. Um, so anyways, this is what I got. I got a dead field, but it is what it is. You live, you learn. Sometimes things work out and sometimes they don't and you pick up and you try something new next year. For those of you that watched our video last fall and some of our projects, we did get that field back there completed for the donks. Again, that poor field, we planted it with equine seed at the beginning of the season. It's died, it's starting to come back. It still looks awful now. It's been a big disappointment this year with the rain situation. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you love this garden tour. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. And please remember to subscribe to our channel so you can follow along with everything we're doing here at Sugar Maple Farmhouse. If you guys have any advice, you can also leave that in the comment section below. I think this is my eighth year gardening, but I am not above taking advice because one of the beautiful things I think about gardening is that it's a learning process every single year and every single year you can learn something different and new to make it more beautiful and to build on your knowledge. Anyways, I hope that you guys have a great day. There will not be a blog post up on this right now. I will probably do that later in the season. I'll put a link in the description below when a blog post on the garden this year is up and you can check it out then if you want. If not, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, bye.